Today on Tech Scene Zelly, I'm going to be creating my own personal Netflix with the use of Plex Media Server. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Prashan and welcome to Tech Scene Zelly. If this is your first time here and you are interested in consumer tech, creative builds, product reviews, as well as home networking guides, you can start by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon so you get notified every time we post new content. Plex Media Server, or Plex as it regularly referred to, is a media server, your own private Netflix as it were. Plex allows you to group your media in one place and makes it simple to access. Plex allows you to have movies, series, pictures and music. Put it all in one place and access it from anywhere in the world. Let's get on with it. We're going to be installing Plex on our home server. And if you missed us putting together our home server, that video could be found linked up there in the YouTube cards. There are two parts to Plex. The server, which will be managing your media, and the client, which will be accessing the media. All right, let's hop over to Plex.tv and take a look at some of the client and server applications. All right, so let's go to apps. All right, so players, clients or players, streaming devices. So as you can see, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, your Chromecast, Roku, Smart TVs, Plex could be played by your Android phone, Android Auto, which is uh, through your car, iOS, Apple. Plex could be played through your computer, your web. So it could be played through the web browser. There is a dedicated Plex Media Player application, which could be found in the Microsoft App Store. Plex could be used through gaming consoles, so the Nvidia Shield, PlayStation, Xbox One, and even with home accessories, such as Amazon Alexa, Sonos, Carvo, and there even is applications for virtual reality. All right, so that are some of the clients or streaming players, uh, streaming devices or players. All right, so let's take a look at some of the servers. So you could make your computer a server. So you could download Plex Media Server for your computer. You could turn your gaming console into a server. So the Nvidia Shield is only supported at this time. You could also turn your network attached storages or SNALs into uh, a Plex Media Player. So we have the Netgear, uh, Western Digital, MyCloud, MyPass, QNAP, Synology NAS, Seagate, and even mobile storage devices, like a wireless drive here. You could even turn your router into a Plex Media Server, right? And the last thing that they have linked here is accessories. So these tuners, you'd require a Plex Pass. So the Plex Pass, we're going to be discussing that in the next segment, where we're talking about the two different versions of Plex the free and the paid version. So as I was saying, there are two different versions of Plex. A free version, which we are going to be making use of, and a paid version, which is called, which you require a Plex Pass. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between the paid and the free version. Okay, the free version, the media is your own. of The media the media you own is yours, of course. Plex Media Server is free to use, including the Plex web app. News, podcasts, and web shows are supported for all free users. All non-mobile public apps are free. These include Amazon TV, Android, Apple TV, Chromecast, Plex Media Player, Roku, Smart TVs, gaming consoles. Our mobile apps Android, iOS, web 
uh, I mean Windows or Windows Phone can be used for free but have limitations. Until the mobile app is unlocked, you are only allowed a one minute limit and your photos will be wa watermarked. So that's the tiniest catch for the free one. All right, and let's take a look at the paid one. Flex paid subscription, Flex Pass, as I was saying, includes free to use paid apps, benefits, activation of all your mobile devices or mobile apps, live TV and VR, uh, DVR. So just like how you have your set top boxes, you could connect this DVR to your Plex and you could actually record your shows and then watch it at a later date. So this is actually quite handy if you're into that sort of thing, like even recording live spots and stuff, this would be really useful for that. You could stream trailers and extras for your content and adding geographic tags. This is a highlight, using mobile syncing. So just like how um, the higher tier of uh, Netflix, where you can download uh, your content and watch it offline, that's the same here. You need a Plex Pass to do so. All right, and there's a couple more features. That's the difference between the Plex Pass and the, the, free, the paid and the free Plex. All right, so let's take a look at the Plex Pass. All right, so here we go. Plex Pass, uh, if you are interested in getting such, has three versions. A monthly for five US dollars a month, a yearly for 40 US dollars a month, and a lifetime subscription for 120 US dollars a month. So obviously, if you aren't sure about yourself, I suggest you take the monthly one, try it out, and if you are happy, then skip the yearly and just take the lifetime because that's a really good saving compared to taking monthly and yearly. But if you actually like to try it out, I remember reading somewhere that there is a three month trial of uh, a three month Plex Pass trial, but it isn't listed here on the website. So I'm going to take a look and hopefully find that and actually try out a three month Plex Pass trial. All right, so that's the Plex Pass taken, uh, taken a look at. The next thing, and that's about it to talk about Plex. So let's go ahead and start the installation. So as I said, I'm going to be installing this on our home network server. And if you remember, on our home network server, I told you there's different virtual machines. And I'm going to be installing this on my server 2012 virtual machine. And the reason for that is because it's hosting all my different media shares. And the main one, which is our multimedia share, right? So if you're wondering how I'm going to be installing it there from here in the studio, I actually have an Ethernet cable running from here directly to my range extender here, which is connected wirelessly to my internal home network, which the server is on. And if you'd like to check out my recent upgrade to my home network, that video is going to be linked up there in the YouTube cards, right? So what I'm going to do is actually remote desktop into my server 2012, right? So here we go, hosting server. Let's wait for the connection to open. And the first thing to do, we are going to hop over to Plex.tv and Plex.tv Let's wait for this to load. And what we're going to do is scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and Flex Media Server downloads. All right. So we are downloading for Windows. Flex Media Server for Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or newer. Let's click download and wait for that to complete. Now that we have Plex Media Server installed, uh, downloaded, we're going to run the installation. 
click install and there is a quick setup click launch Okay, at this point you're going to have to sign in with your Plex account. So uh, you can create an account if you don't have one, but I already have one so I'm going to log in with that. Okay, Plex Media Server runs on a computer where you keep your media. Plex scans your media, automatically organizes it and makes it beautiful. Play your media on any screen with your favorite Plex app. That's how it works. So let's click got it. And now you could sign in or subscribe for a Plex pass. But I'm not going to do that at this point. So I'm going to minimize that. So we need to give our Plex server a name. I'm naming my server Danilal Home underscore Plex. And this part, allow me to access my media outside my home. So with that ticked, it allows you to access your, your media anywhere in the world. And that's what makes this your own private Netflix. Just like how Netflix, you can take it anywhere and watch the content, Plex is the same. You can take, you can go anywhere and watch your own personal content, right? So I'm going to tick that and I'm going to go next. So add your library. So they already have music and photo libraries added here. And for my Plex at this point, I just want to have my movies and series on it. So I'm going to delete these two libraries. All right. I would like to add my music but I do have like 40 gigs or 50 gigs of music, 80s, 90s, today, some Hindi music. So it's really a mess and I don't want to add that and just cause problems. So let's go add a library. We're adding movies. All right, next, browse your media. So let's take a look at our drive. So multimedia. I have three folders, movies, all the way from pre-2015 movies up to this year, 2019. I have cartoons, classic movies for myself, collections, Adam Sandler, Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings, and so on. I have Hindi movies, the whole Marvel collection, stand-up comedy, scary movies, and that's quite a bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here and I was M. Oh, wrong folder. F. So I'm going to select movies. I'm going to select add. Movies. And then add a library again. This time I'm adding TV shows. Next, browse for media. F series. So add that. Right. So my series folder, if I head over to multimedia, my series in there, I have two folders still airing, which are TV shows that are still airing and stopped airing, which is stuff that stopped airing, but which I enjoy, like Friends, uh, Big Bang Theory, which just recently stopped airing, and so on. All right. So the third folder I have here in my multimedia drive is new downloads. 
So stuff that are, that's either still downloading or just completed downloading. But as you know, everyone is a bit lazy. So it's not like as soon as it's completed downloading, I sort them into the files that they need to go. Every little while when the new downloads folder gets a, little, a bit too full or anything, that's when I actually sort out the files. So I'm not going to be adding the new downloads to the Plex yet. And this is our media library now, and we're going to hit next. It says get Plex apps. Let's look at the Plex. Oh no. All right, and click done. So this is now our Plex. Okay, so it's showing us the headlines and it's actually loading the content as we speak. Let's have a look. All right, so it's the, the libraries are being updated. So it is uh, quite a while after I left this thing to scan the libraries. And let's take a look at some of the movies. So the good thing about Plex, it actually adds metadata such as the year and even descriptions of the movies. And it even gives it a, a cover to the movie. The only problem I faced was when I added my TV shows, it kind of misread. Uh, so if you go here, it picked up Game of Thrones season one and Pokemon season one, but it actually was, it actually is. Um, let's, let's just, okay, so if you click here. This is actually 13 reasons why, but it thinks that it is uh, Game of Thrones. So I have to actually rethink how my uh, TV shows are labeled and kept. But the movies were absolutely amazing. Every movie I had, it pulled up a cover for it. It pulled up the year, even some of the Hindi movies, which I was really supply, uh, surprised with. And that is our setup complete. So this isn't the end of our Plex journey. Once my Plex setup is up and running properly, I plan on doing a full tour of Plex. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving a like rating if you did. And getting subscribed if you aren't subscribed already, turning on post notifications so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions regarding Plex or require any help setting up your own Plex server, please drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to try and help you out. Guys, my name is Fishan and I'll see you same time, same place next week. <laughs>